Now that we're to part C, I want you to pause the video for a moment and try to sketch this angle here, 7 pi over 4. Okay, so now that you've given it a try, let's use the same technique uh, that we used in the past. We're going to take this 7 pi over 4 and just figure out what fraction it is of a full revolution. And so if you simplify this, we're going to get 7 eighths of a revolution. All right, and I'm going to kind of mark off where these would be. So if we scroll up a little bit, we can see what 1 eighth of a revolution looks like. It's this pi over 4 here. Okay, It's half of a quarter rotation. Okay. So if we were to do uh, one eighth of a rotation from the positive x axis, that would put us somewhere about right here where this dot is. Okay. And now if we were to go another eighth of a revolution, that'd put us here. And if we were to go another eight, another eighth, I should say. I'm going to try and put this other one closer to the middle. There we go. So here's one eighth of a revolution, two eighths of a revolution, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths. So I just counted to get here. Okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and finish off this angle here. We need our last ray. Okay, so it'd be something like that. Okay, and if we were to sketch in um, the direction that this traveled, well, you just watched me go around in the counterclockwise direction because we have a positive angle. But this right here, this is that seven pi over four. All right, now there, there is one thing to note about the examples that we did up here. Everything that we looked at between A, B, and C was less than a single revolution, okay? Well, sometimes things revolve multiple times, okay? Not everything's gonna be less than one revolution. So this idea of coterminal angles is gonna be extremely helpful. Okay, um, let's figure out what's going on. Two angles with the same initial and terminal sides, but possibly different rotations are called co-terminal. Okay, and the idea of them being co-terminal is because they have the same terminal side. Okay? And we know that they have the same initial side as well because these are in standard position. Okay. Now, the question is, is, all three of these pictures look identical. How, how are these different angles? Okay. Well, one option is, I could rotate down this way, minus pi over 4 radians. Okay. Or alternatively, I could come around this way, 7 pi over 4 radians. Okay. Um, are there any other possible rotations that I could take to get here? Okay. Well, one possible one would be that we could go in the positive direction like we did before, but then we decide, well, let's do one more. And so you can see here, we've actually almost done two revolutions because seven pi over four was already a pretty big angle. Okay. Well, let's figure out exactly what this angle would be. Okay, well, if it was, let me actually get rid of this. If this is seven pi over four to right here, 
Well, if I want to land back in this same spot, why don't we just go 2 pi, one more full revolution? So plus 2 pi. Okay. So getting in that extra revolution. Okay. Well, let's see what this is equal to. Well, 7 pi over 4, if we got a common denominator between 7 pi over 4 and 2 pi, well, this would turn into a plus 8 pi over 4. So this gives us 15 pi over 4 is our angle. 15 pi over 4. Before we scroll down any further, I want to show you all one more thing. So this angle right here, this minus pi over 4, we could have actually also gotten that angle from 7 pi over 4, just like we got this 15 pi over 4 from the 7 pi over 4. And we do it in a very similar fashion, right? We added an extra revolution to get the 15 pi over 4. Well, how about we take away a revolution or revolve in the other direction? If I were to go minus 2 pi, we have 7 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. And you can probably already see it. This gives us minus pi over 4. Yeah. So we can really get coterminal angles um, of another angle by just adding revolutions or taking revolutions away. So adding or subtracting multiples of 2 pi. And if we were in degrees, this would be, we'd be adding or subtracting multiples of 360 degrees. Let's see what this looks like down here. So, again, if we were in degrees, we'd take our theta degrees and just add or subtract a multiple of 360 degrees. Okay. And to make this a multiple, I just need to write times k. And this is where k is an integer. So, I technically didn't need to write this minus here because k is an integer. But I like to write it in there so that you don't forget you can subtract. Okay. But is what an integer is, is these are your whole numbers and they're opposites. So our list would look something like those negative numbers, and then your positive numbers, and zero, of course. And there it is. That's what our set of integers looks like. Again, the whole numbers and their opposites. And then if we're in radians, we can say almost the exact same thing. Um, the only difference here is it's theta plus or minus 2 pi times k. That's what our example up above, that's what we were doing. Okay. Um, and again, integers, whole numbers and their opposites. All right. Well, we're going to... Um, use this idea in our next uh, set of examples. So let's go down and take a look at that. So the first one we have here is this minus 330 degrees. And is what our goal is to do with this minus 330 is we want it to be an angle between 0 and 360 degrees. Okay. So really, we want to find something coterminal with minus 330 that is less than one full revolution. That's what we're really trying to do here. And there is a reason for this. We're not doing it just for fun. Uh, we're doing this because it's going to help us once we start talking about trig functions. Okay. And let's give it a try. So remember, I can only add or subtract multiples of 360 degrees. Okay. Um, so if this is negative, I want it to be positive, right? I want it between 0 and 360. So I'm going to definitely be adding a multiple of 360. But I think all it's going to take us is just one full revolution to get us where we want to go. Okay, This is going to get, put us at 30 degrees. Okay. All right, let's give Part B a try. So is what we want to do here on Part B, it looks like this time, is take away some revolution, subtract some multiples of 2 pi. And the reason I say that is 25 fourths is definitely bigger than 2. So this is definitely bigger than 2 pi. Okay, so let's take a look at that. 25 pi over 4 
And again, we're going to take away some revolutions. I'm just going to write 2 pi here for now. Okay. And if you wanted to, you could actually try this one out if you if you think maybe this is enough revolutions. Okay. Why don't we just give it a try? We can erase this if it doesn't work out. Okay. So this is going to be minus 8 pi over 4. Okay. So this is not going to bring us down all the way to 8 pi over 4 or less, right? This is going to be uh, 17 pi over 4. Okay, so not quite small enough. Okay. Let's, in, in, if you wanted to, you could check this in your calculator. You could do 17 fourths. If that's a number bigger than 2, then we are not between 0 and 2 pi radians. Okay. So let's try more. It's, that wasn't enough for evolutions. Um, let's maybe give three a try. Okay. So if we were to do three revolutions, multiply this by three, we really have minus six pi here now. Let's see what this gives us. 25 pi over four. Um, minus six pi. So I need to multiply that six by uh, four. So 24 pi over four. And this gives us pi over four. And this is indeed an angle between 0 and 2 pi. So we have found exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Go ahead and give part C and D a try. And in the next video, we'll cover um, part C and D.